extort my money and the threat of destruction to the Union to extort my vote can ca scarcely be distinguished in principle. A few words now to Republicans. It is exceedingly desirable that all parts of this great confederacy shall be at peace and in harmony with one another. Let us Republicans do our part to have it so. Even though much provoked, let us do nothing through passion and ill temper. Even though the southern people will not so much as listen to us, let us calmly consider their demands and yield to them if, in our deliberate view of our duty, we possibly can, judging by all they say and do, and by the subject and nature of their controversy with us, let us determine, if we can, what shall satisfy them. Will they be satisfied if the territories be unconditionally surrendered to them? We know they will not. In all their present complaints against us, the territories are scarcely mentioned. Invasions and insurrections are the rage now. Will it satisfy them if, in the future, we have nothing to do with invasions and insurrections? We know it will not. We so know because we who never had anything to do with invasions and insurrections, and yet this total abstaining does not exempt us from the charge and the denunciation. The question recurs, what will satisfy them? Simply this, we must not only let them alone, but we must somehow convince them we do let them alone. This, we know by experience, is no easy task. We have been so trying to convince them from the very beginning of our organization, but with no success. In all our platforms and speeches, we have constantly protested our purpose to let them alone, but this has had no tendency to convince them. Alike unavailing to convince them, it is the fact that they have never detected a man of any of us in any attempt to disturb them. These natural and apparently adequate means all failing, what will convince them? This and this only cease to call slavery wrong and join them in calling it right. And this must be done thoroughly, done in acts as well as in words. Silence will not be tolerated. We must place ourselves avowedly with them. Senator Douglas's new sedition law must be enacted and enforced, suppressing all declarations that slavery is wrong, whether made in politics, in presses, in pulpits, or in private. We must arrest and return their fugitive slaves with greedy pleasure. We must pull down our free state constitutions. The whole atmosphere must be disinfected from all taint of opposition to slavery before they will cease to believe that their, all their troubles proceed from us. I am quite aware that they do not state their case precisely in this way. Most of them would probably say to us, Let us alone, do nothing to us, and say what you please about slavery. But we do let them alone, have never disturbed them, so that, after all, it is what we say which dissatisfies them. They will continue to accuse us of doing until we cease saying. I am also aware that they have not, as yet, in terms demanded the overthrow of our free state constitutions. Yet those constitutions declare the wrong of slavery with more solemn emphasis than do all other sayings against it. And when all other sayings shall have been silenced, the overthrow of these constitutions will be demanded, and nothing will be left to resist the demand. It is nothing to the contrary that they do not demand the whole of this just now. Demanding what they do, and for the reason they do, they can voluntarily stop nowhere short of this consummation. Holding as they do that slavery is morally right and socially elevating, they cannot cease to demand a full national recognition of it as a legal right and a social blessing. Nor can we justifiably withhold this on any ground save our conviction that slavery is long, wrong. If slavery is right, all words, acts, and constitutions against it are themselves wrong and should be silenced and swept away. If it is right, we cannot justly object to its nationality, its universality. If it is wrong, they cannot justly insist upon its extension, its enlargement. All they ask we could readily grant if we thought slavery right. All we ask they could as readily grant if they thought it wrong. 
Their thinking it right and our thinking it wrong is the precise fact upon which depends the whole controversy. Thinking it right, as they do, they are not to blame for desiring its full recognition as being right. But thinking it wrong, as we do, can we yield to them? Can we cast our votes with their view and against our own? In our view of moral, social, and political responsibilities, can we do this? Wrong as we think slavery is, we can yet afford to let it alone where it is, because that much is due to the necessity arises, arising from its actual presence in the nation. But can we, while our votes will prevent it, allow it to spread into the national territories and to overrun us here in the free states? If our sense of duty forbids this, then let us stand by our duty, fearlessly and effectively. Let us be diverted by none of those sophistical contrivances wherewith we are so industriously plied and belabored, contrivances such as groping for some middle ground between the right and the wrong, vain as the search for a man who should neither be a living man nor a dead man, such as a policy of don't care on a question about which all men do care, such as union appeals beseeching true union men.